it's me Julia I'm back again with a new kiln opening and this time it is my own kiln again which I'm super excited about so I have my workspace just about up and ready so I'll give you a little tour first of all give you one second just go out here just turn you around here's my workspace only a tiny little studio Kiln's not normally there, it's up in the top corner, but I was firing. So I have all my bits and pieces. My glazing trolley. There we go. And my workstation there. And I can pull that table out a bit more. So that's my uh, stand for filming. So I'll put you on there. Right, here we go. I had the briefest little look to see if it was shiny inside to see if it had fired correctly but I haven't looked at anything so um <laughs> oh there's a little fly perils have been outside I guess right I'm going to take this stopper out because I have that in just to get some fresh air in okay right <laughs> Oh my, okay. Okay, let's just get on with it, right. I've got a couple of big things, so there's not tons in there, but um, I'll show you what's on the top little half shelf. I did two little trinket dishes just with some uh, clay I had left over, and I did it in Duncan's melted caramel, which was actually on special offer at Pot Clay's. Um, it was half price, so I think that uh, they're not making it anymore. But I wondered if it was going to be like make or birch. So I'll let you have a look. It's slightly yellower than make or birch. And actually with three coats, it's covered quite a lot of the texture. So I'm wondering if two is, uh, is okay with that one. So just a little, little trinket dishes there. Yeah, I mean, it's nice, but I think two coats was probably slightly yellower. So I'm on the fence with that one. Okay, so I had two little roses, which have fired on tiny stilts, which I used one of the um, moulds that I got from Timu. They are different sizes, so obviously didn't do it very well. <laughs> so this one is in Saturated Gold by Amacor. And this one is in Ancient Copper by Amacor, which, as most of you will know, is now a discontinued colour. But I do love Ancient Copper. It's just so pretty. I don't know if you can see. It works quite well on that texture. Okay, next. Okay. Another of the, the moulds that I got from Timu, I don't know if you remember the um, Oreo cookie one, which turned out really well. They also had a Lotus Biscuit one. So I have had a go trying to get the Lotus Biscuit colour, just for a bit of fun. That is um, the Bellissimo Wonder Glazes that are like stroke and coat. I put orange, caramel and a couple of drops of black just to see if I could get that biscuity colour. It needs maybe a little more orange. but. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, they work okay. I'm quite pleased with them. That one still has the stilt attached to it, which I need to knock off. But that was the only way to get them glazed on the back was to put them on the stilts. So they're kind of cute. Right. Um, I also, with the moulds, did these little, I think it's supposed to be a polar bear, but it's kind of cat-like kind of bear like so I did 
there's a couple on the bottom as well this one is a little one that I did in Amacor um what's the brown celadon called hang on I'll tell you iron <laughs> yeah Amacor iron my brain is not working very well so that is actually the little half shelf I'm going to put some gloves on because it's getting or it's going to get hot further down so let's have a look so one kiln shelf Ooh, oh wow oh okay right I'll get all these I needed to lift my stilts up so I have a series of little cookies that I've used as extra height on a stilt and um, they've fused together so they're all the same height and it just adds that little bit more because it's in between where this one is and the next size down is so it works quite well. Let me just, I'm not going to put them there actually because they might fall on my pots and I don't want them to fall on the pots. Oh no, I've had a bit of an accident. <laughs> I'll get that out first and show you. Okay, so I did a lot of stilting in this one. So I've made some pumpkins. That one needs knocking off. And it's now fused pumpkins. So I stilted them and this one has wobbled and come off its stilt and stuck to this one. <laughs> so it's a kind of, it's made its own art. But for um I know they're not actually uh, well accurate pumpkins, but I am quite pleased with them. The colours on this one's lovely. I did this with um Blue Rutile and Blue Lagoon, I think it was on that one. And that was Amacor Oatmeal. And then the top is Iron and the little leaf is uh, Rainforest. So that is some weird kind of fusion art, which is a shame. I'm going to probably try to Dremel them open. Yeah. It has taken a little of my kiln shelf as well, actually, if you can see. Where has it gone? There. It's actually taken a small chunk out of my kiln shelf, but it's fine. They look really cute and I'm really pleased with the shine I've got on everything. Here is another pumpkin that's sitting on a cookie, which I'll have to knock off. Yeah. And this one is Amoco Iron with seaweed and uh, blue, no, seaweed and blue lagoon. That's that one. But they're so pretty. I feel like I might have to do them again because, um, yeah, I was going to have a nice little pumpkin selection. And I did just the blue lagoon and then seaweed to only to about here because I know that it would run and I think it's just run one tiny drip there that's uh, just got it fused to the cookie so I shall get that off so not very good on the pumpkin front so here I'll show you this one oh, okay this one is a coil ball that I have made for my friend Angela it was her 60th birthday a couple of weeks ago and we're having an afternoon tea me and my little pottery group uh, for Angela here at my house so I wanted to do just a little a gift for her that she wouldn't make for herself so this is a coil ball it's actually red and white um, clay but it's fired really pale if you can see but it's kind of it's brought out the marble really well in it which is uh, 
which is really nice. There was a tiny crack there in the bottom, just where it kind of all joins. Sometimes that happens, but I put so much glaze in it, it hasn't shown through. All it's done is it's broken with this little bit of brown in the middle. So this one was three coats of texture turquoise. Hang on. No, three coats of blue lagoon. No, three coats of textured turquoise, two coats of blue lagoon, or the other way around. Then stripes of oatmeal, amico oatmeal. And then uh, some more textured turquoise, one more coat and another coat of blue lagoon, but not going all the way down to the middle. I left the middle uh, for the last few coats because I knew from the last coil ball that I did, the red one, uh, with the kind of lovely pink glazes in, that pooled too much in the middle and it blistered blistered ever so slightly whereas that one hasn't as you can see the middle still has a lovely shine and then I just coloured around the furry edge and I think it actually works really well because I thought it might come out more brown which it has which actually goes well with the green and I had a little look on a couple of photographs that I had um, of my friend Angela, she'd sent a couple of photographs of her dog to our group and when I looked in the background I could see that she had turquoise in her living room so I wanted to do it some kind of colour to match um, and I think actually it has worked out really really well. I love it. It's not mine but I really love it. I think I might, it would go so well in my living room because I have greens. Um, I think I'm going to have to do another one for, for my centrepiece in my living room or as a fruit bowl or to keep all my crystals in. So yeah, I'm going to have to get on to that. So that's that one. I made a smaller one in an emergency if it didn't work uh, on the bigger one, if the crack showed through so that I would have a backup. And this one is actually just as beautiful. But what I'm going to show you is the difference. They both went in with, I think, the same amount of red clay in. Maybe there was a little less red clay in this one. But that one has come out really brown. And I think the amount of red glaze must have affected, the amount of red clay, sorry, must have affected the outcome of the glazes because there's a lot more breaking. It's the same colour, texture turquoise blue lagoon, but on this one, I didn't put any oatmeal sweeps on. I just left it texture turquoise blue lagoon. Three blue lagoons, two texture turquoise. But I think because of the amount of iron in the red clay that it's helped uh, with the drippy and it's brought it down from the edges and I absolutely love that one. So I do get to keep this one unless somebody comes along and likes it and then I'll just give them it and make another one because I like doing that. If somebody takes an interest in a piece, I like to gift it. I only have one Oreo cookie left because <laughs> I've just given them all away. So really, really beautiful and they're so glossy. What I found in the community kiln that I was using is that Mako glazes work really well in there, but the Amico ones, I think it's just slightly hot. It's 1210 that they fire to on a slow uh, firing and then they do 30 minutes at the top. Whereas I'm doing, I tried that in my kiln first, but it, I felt that was too hot. So I'm doing 11, I think it's 11.90 I'm going to, and holding it for 30 minutes at the top. And I'm doing that on medium speed, and I'm getting a really beautiful shine. I mean, I don't think you could even see how lovely and shiny that is. So I absolutely love that one too. Right, this one, oh dear, I've had another 
another fusion. Gosh, when will I learn? <laughs> Put that cookie off. Right. This one, Jacob made this pot. It's a little uh, jug from my templates and it had palladium on it. And the palladium has ran like Morphara. Like, really, really ran. Now, I've done palladium before, not had an issue with it. Um, yeah, it's gone back and front, so I'm gonna have to do a lot of chipping. Um, <laughs> I think it's probably, I don't know if it's rookie mistakes from being back in my own curl or being a little bit careless. Um, either way, not to matter. Uh, but if I can, if I can get it off because it's stuck all the way around, um, that was Jacob's obsidian on the inside and uh, palladium on the outside. But it may end up being scrap because it's literally stuck all the way around on the cookie. I did need some new kiln shafts and I thought I'd get away with it, but um, alas. Might have to swap the bottom shelf for that one because it's gonna have a uh, palladium glaze all over it. But oh wow! Oh, I'm gonna show you the little pieces first. Oh no! Oh no! How did that one do that? Oh my! <laughs> Okay, uh, so this one little little pumpkin with a hole through to hang on a, um, I've got like a big loop that I've wrapped with a uh, jute, like, um, not jute, you know, twine. And I was gonna hang them down from that. So each kind of matched one of the bigger ones so he matched that one he matched that one but i have underestimated the glaze slightly and <laughs> stuck to the kiln shelf so what i just said about using that shelf for um <laughs> instead of that one. oh my kiln shelves <laughs> Oh, it, they're just killed shelves. It's no biggie. Right, let's get these out. Wow. Okay. I have three more of the little bear stroke cats. Smoky Merlot. Uh, pink Opal. Doesn't come out very well, Pink Opal. Yeah, one of those disappointing ones. And this one is seaweed with a little uh, rainforest over it. All of these glazes that I've used, except for the Lotus Biscuits, are Amico so far. I don't think I used any makeup. Um, I have some little scrap clay ghosts just when I was using up some scrap clay just for Halloween to go with the fused pumpkins and um, a couple of things that I've made for so that the ghosts were in Amoco snow and a couple of things that I made for Jacob um, this was a mold hmm of a I think he's a bulldog, but we've pretended he's a, a pug. But I put the uh, Duncan uh, Melted Caramel on, the same as, same as these ones. And this is how he's turned out. He's a little mottled. And he did have a little bit of black kind of around his whiskers and things and on his toenails, but that hasn't shown through at all. But that's his little face there. He'll still love him, but he's kind of, you know, in that um, almost a brindle uh, look. 
But that, excuse that noise, that's my next door neighbor in the shower. He likes to sing. So there's these like, at least these little eyes have come out there. Cute face. And this one was one I hand built because Jacob really, really loves French bulldogs. So I wanted to do a little bit of a French bulldog for him, but it's not quite the color I thought it was going to be, but he'll still love him. He's got a little, um, you know, like a dark around his muzzle there and his ears and his tail and his little, uh, and pink inside his ears, which has faded a little bit again but he's kind of cute and he's quite muscly, isn't he? <laughs> it's cute. Right, last but certainly not least is this coil ball that I made. Wow, okay. I must have done different bits of scrap clay. Now this was done in buff. Yeah, it was, they were all done in buff. However, as you can see, some of the buff is coming out really light and some really dark. So, yeah, I don't think I used anything untoward. Uh, what a difference though. One's got obviously a much higher iron content or magnet, What's the name? Manganese. Manganese content, I think. Sometimes when I open a bag of the school buff, you do see like the, the dark specks of the manganese, um, which, you know, when you rib in it does smooth in. So I think what that must have had more manganese in that one. But what an interesting um, bottom that has made. And this is the top. So I made this, I have a mold, the same as this one, it's over here, um, which I made from a, a bulb that I had. And uh, then I can just, you know, just use the, the, the mold whenever I want this kind of shape. But I'm really into doing things with a coil and then smoothing them over. But I like to leave a little texture on it. So you'll be able to see it's ever so slightly bumpy but it's not where you can't put food into it. Um, I've just remembered actually there's two other pots which I'll have to go get. I'll put you on pause in a minute. So this was Amoco Obsidian, two coats, then uh, seaweed down to here, two coats, then to the same depth, smoky merlot then uh, some flicks of oatmeal flicks of smoky merlot and flicks of seaweed because my theory was i really wanted like a galaxy kind of effect i mean look how shiny that is it is absolutely I don't get that shine out of the community cone. That's just so beautiful. Like I'm, I absolutely love it, but you can't see any of the smoky Merlot in there. There's no pink coming through whatsoever, but beautiful nonetheless. Still absolutely love it. It's so, ever so slightly, I think this little bit here is ever so slightly warped but you know it's handmade it's not meant to be perfect maybe you can see the smoky merlot if you look in the light this little section in the middle here has that slight smoky red to it so i think that's where the smoky merlot went it went all the way into the middle but yeah my theory was with putting splashes on is i really do like the a glaze chip effect and I thought to myself if I just splash randomly would that give the similar effect to glaze chips um, because I thought 
it's the same kind of thing but it hasn't given the same effect because maybe because of all of the drippy glazes that I've used they have all blended in together but I really am super pleased with that one so I'm going to put that one down and I'm just going to go and get the two pots that I meant to bring down to show you so bear with me right I'm back okay let me just put these down okay there was more than two actually there was four so I'm going to show you this one was another coil ball that I did in uh, another mold that I have and all kind of curly coils so I do them all different so there's not two the same this was the red also red mixed with birch white um, on this one but you can't really see the marble you can really it just looks like buff but I had put just a plain blue glaze on it um, I can't remember which one it was but it was just a plain blue and for some reason it got all of these brown speckles in it and you would actually think that I'd use something like shipwreck by Mako I'm pretty sure I didn't though because I'm not really keen on speckly glazers so I refired it without them knowing really I just slapped some more glaze on and put it back on the shelf in the community kiln and uh, I put some nose blue on it but it hasn't made a massive difference I know some people love uh, the speckles but yeah I'm not a massive fan it still looks nice and you can see where one of the coils has started to uh, creep away just in the middle and you can just see where the glaze just started to seep out there but still a lovely piece so that's that one then another I think this was in another mold that I have I like making molds uh, this is a little plate done in frosted lemon by Mako and I did just a pattern on a roller that I have just in a stripe on the so you've got plain and then just a little piece with the texture on it's quite nice texture it's, I don't know how it is just geometric I guess but I really quite like it frosted lemon it was the first time that I'd used that one it was one I bought for the group and what would I think it's nice but if you don't put it on thick enough it goes patchy but yeah, I like that. I'll use it when I have my afternoon tea uh, for Angela next week. I'll be getting all my plates out. Okay, so actually, when I was talking about um, some coil pots that I'd made earlier, I realized I hadn't shown you because they were the ones upstairs. So there was this one, which is in Birch White by, I think it's a Pottery Crafts clay. I actually really like it it's quite groggy um, but it coils beautifully and it just doesn't seem to crack like the buff can and this was I believe the seaweed and not seaweed sorry the blue lagoon and the turquoise textured turquoise absolutely gorgeous but same same glazing and look at the difference that that amount of iron in that red clay does but how beautiful are they both like really really gorgeous but I don't know if you can see like you can see a shine on that that was the community kill but there is much more glossiness on my firing schedule and this one here is the last last and probably the best red marble again all the different coil patterns and inside
just slightly, slightly bubbly in the middle. Um, but this was an experiment with a lot of glazes. So we have pink opal, we have um, smoky mellow, and then we have raspberry mist. So smoky mellow, amico, pink opal, uh, mako, and what other one did I say? Raspberry mist, mako, and what other glaze? Chun plum. That's amico. So then I did between two layers because I just did one of each, I believe. Between two layers, I did sweeps down of flux. Put another layer of glaze on. Sweeps down with oatmeal, like that amico oatmeal. And then the top layer was the raspberry mist. And that's the lovely colours that it turned out. I love these. And again, I only go around the first bit of the pot. And I love that the oatmeal has brought out some blues or the flux has brought out some blues in there, which is really, really beautiful. So still my favorite, although Angela's is second favorite, I think. I think done both in the same mold. I have like that big, don't know if you can see it in the middle there, that one um, is the big garden sphere mold that I used half of it to do these in. But I think that is smaller than that one. So I think it's shrunk more. Yeah, it is because it can fit inside. If it was the same, it wouldn't fit inside. So I think, yeah, I'm pleased with my firing overall. I'll put that one down as soon as it's not mine. Um, I'm really pleased with my firing overall. I have a couple of slight kiln uh, shelf issues to deal with now, but that's, it's all good. And it's all in the name of having fun, making pottery. I'm not taking it too seriously. I don't want to take it seriously. It's just about playing for me and it's the therapeutic nature of playing with clay and seeing if you can get a good outcome with it, experimenting with molds and doing different things. I've not wanted to repeat uh, things that I've built so far, but I really, really love the coil balls. So I think I'm going to be going on making more coil because there's such a, a wonderful, mindfulness about rolling coil for me um so i just you know i'm working with that at the moment and and loving it so uh thank you so much for all of your subscriptions and um yeah thanks for watching i'm really really just so happy that you're all coming with me on this journey and uh, i don't know where it's going but uh, I'm just so pleased to be able to share with you. So thank you so much, guys. I hope you have a really wonderful day and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.